Hello there, I'm Mal, and welcome back to Stellaris. Now, this is Season 3 of what I call Community Empires. And you're probably pretty bright, so you can figure that out. But just in case you're a little bit sleepy or something, who knows? Community Empire means that someone from the community, like yourself, watching this video, has submitted the Empire uh, via the comments or an email or what have you, and I have then created them and included them in the Let's Play as a potential opponent. What's cool at this point is that uh, I have... So many of them created, I don't think there'll be any random empires in this particular Let's Play. It should all be ones that were created by people like you, which is really, really fun for me. Matter of fact, well, it is and it isn't, because like the last Let's Play actually ended up getting my face smashed by these evil space lizards that was created by someone else. <laughs> which is fine, but, you know, I'm hoping, I'm hoping for a, a win in this one. We'll see. Okay, so, what we'll do in this episode, which is actually functioning as episode zero in the playlist, it's just an introduction to this Let's Play, uh, I will show you the new community empires that have been created, and I'm going to continue to play as a giant cockroach, the, Mal the Malrochian Order, because, well, why wouldn't you want to play as a giant cockroach? But I am going to make some changes to the roaches, just a little bit, the ones I'm going to be playing, so we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit. Then I'm going to move into the game settings, and I think I'm going to keep pretty close to the previous Let's Play, because we didn't get to play that out all the way. So I, I still want to stick with hyperspace lanes, and I'm going to make a few little tweaks, but I think we're going to keep most of those settings. So we'll talk about that, and then uh, I'll launch into kind of the, just the first startup, so we see our system and kind of the surrounding area and kind of get acclimated. And then I'll end Episode 0, and then the actual proper Let's Play will start in Episode 1. And hopefully all of that made sense. All right, let's jump in and take a look at these new empires as part of Community Empires 2. So here we are. We find ourselves on the Select Empire screen. So I'm just going to kind of quickly go through these. Um, I'll maybe highlight the government and then kind of hover over each of their traits and whatnot. Uh, and then you can always pause if you want more details. Okay, so we have the Grosian Imperium, Military Republic, Militarist, uh, fanatic, uh, fanatic materialist. So this is militarist, like military. And then we have materialist. Do that 10 times real fast. <laughs> Slow breeders, intelligent and strong. Next, we've got the Traxian Union, despotic hemorrhage, pacifist, fanatic materialist, intelligent, natural engineers and weak. I'm a little concerned about these guys long term. If they go unchecked with all these bonuses to research, they could be really scary. So I'm going to have to try to find these guys hopefully relatively soon and do something about them. Then we've got the Cherson United Forces, military dictatorship, fanatic militarist, and then materialist. They're non-adaptive, they're thrifty, and they're industrious. So they have a lot of production bonuses. They've got a lot of energy credits and a lot of industry right out of the gate. So it'll be interesting to see how quickly they spread. Then we've got the Cosmic Order, Divine Mandate, Pacifist, Fanatic Spiritualist, they have Rapid Breeders, and they're Communal. All right, now we've got uh, these potentially evil space parrots. <laughs> these guys are cool. Despotic Empire, Collectivist, Xenophobe, Materialist, then they have Decadent, Deviant, Intelligence, and, or, in, excuse me, Intelligent, and Adaptive. Then we've got the Huey Rumian Cadre, Moral Democracy, they're Individualist, Xenophile, Pacifist, they're Vernable, so they get plus 90 to their leader lifespan. Uh, which is a huge, uh, which is a huge trait, and I think it costs five if I remember right. So to balance it out, you have to take some other things. So uh, Huey opted to include slow breeders and non-adaptive to pay for it. You know, you take this though, you take vulnerable um, or venerable, venerable. There we go. <laughs> I think I got it right. But you take that, and then you take some, uh, you know, other texts, or you research other texts that increase leader lifespan. And you're going to be spending like next to no money on, or excuse me, no influence on getting new leaders. And then you, you get the other advantage of the fact that they're going to max out on their skills. So you're going to have like these five star leaders and then they're going to be hanging around for a long time. That, that's a particularly powerful trait, I think. Plus, they look cool. I mean, come on. Mushroom head. 
You gotta like that, right? Alright, then we have this, uh, Star Wars, uh, The Old Republic Inspired Empire. Comes from community member Captain Codfish, thank you very much. We've got the Infinite Empire, Despotic Empire, they're Xenophobes, Materialist, or excuse me, Militarist, Spiritualist, they're Adaptive, Slow Breeders, and they're Strong. Okay, and then the last of the new ones, the United Interstellar Adoranian Republic. Whew. Indirect Democracy, Xenophile, Pacifist, Materialist, they're intelligent, they're talented, they're slow readers, and they're sedentary. Okay, so I think I think that's all the new ones, and then the other ones that we'll be playing with uh, that were featured in the first uh, community um, submitted LP. We've got the Shimar Conglomerate, we've got the Extra Regularis, the Hugenian Republic, the Kepler Red Brood, these were the ones that killed me in the last Let's Play, Evil Space Lizards, the Evelyn Collective, the Praetorian Syndicate, and then what I'm going to be playing as the Malrochian Order. However, like I mentioned earlier, I am going to change things up a little bit. So let's go ahead and edit. Now, I've been encouraged to keep Spiritualist because if you weren't aware of this, depending on what ethos you pick, it does dictate what kind of technology and things that you get access to. Now, in particular with Spiritualist, you get access to different kinds of psionic based tech. And I'd like to explore that. I think it's kind of cool and I haven't seen a lot of it. I got to see just a bit of it in the last Let's Play, but I want to play it through. But I'm going to switch things around. Instead of being a fanatic uh, militarist, I'm going to switch to just being a militarist. And then I'm going to actually switch to fanatic spiritualist. So I'm going to put the focus over here. So minus 32 the ethics diversion, so it'll be easier to maintain a larger and more spread out empire. And our growth time is reduced, which is nice. So we'll spread quickly. Then for Militarist, you know, we'll still get a plus 10 War Happiness, which is nice. We get plus 1 Maximum Rivalry instead of 3. We get plus 3% um, to Weapon Damage instead of 10, but it's not it's not bad. I was actually even thinking about grabbing, um, like, Pacifist instead, just for Trust Growth. But we'll, we'll stick with this, we'll stick with Militarist. Now, instead of being a military dictatorship, however, which gives you naval capacity, minus to ship cost, and rivalry influence gain, I'm going to go with Military Republic, uh, which gives you plus 10% army damage, minus 20% army upkeep, but I'm really doing it more for this down here. Military Station build cost minus 15%, Military Station damage plus 10%, because we are going to be playing, again, in a hyperspace lane-based uh, campaign. So you can you can actually build those choke points, and I didn't get to again I didn't get to play that out because I got killed by the space lizards last time so quickly. <laughs> but my hope is that I actually will be able to prove that you can use stations to hold choke points and those in combination with fleets um, and change sort of the strategy of how you do things versus if you were playing with warp or wormhole or or all options or what have you. So I'm gonna go with military republic. This is really good too, Divine Mandate, but no, 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 we'll stick with it. Military Republic. And yes, save the old design. Okay, there we go. I think we're all set. Everyone's locked in. Okay, let's go to the settings. All right, we're going to do four spiral arms. Small. Oh, we can only do two spiral arms, huh? Hmm. I want to do small again, because you get contact, like, right away, and you got to kind of fight right out of the gate. That I think is interesting. We'll do 400 stars. And then we'll do two AI advanced starts. This just means that two of the AIs are going to be sort of guaranteed to be better than you. It has nothing to do with Fallen Empires. If you're familiar with the game at all, Fallen Empires are this totally separate thing of sort of this ancient, uh, quote-unquote, Fallen Empire that can influence the game if they want to. Generally, they kind of sit back. It gives you something to go after long-term because they have, like, advanced technology and whatnot. Uh, we're going to change the difficulty. We're going to go with hard again. Uh, we are going with only hyperdrive. Yeah, I think that looks good. 
Yep. This is exactly what we're going to go with, folks. So let's go ahead and jump in. Actually, do we want more AI empires? Yeah, let's do 12. That'll work. Okay, let's set our research. What did we get? Okay, colony ship. Physics lab. Eh. Oh, physics lab? Yeah, I think so. And then engineering. Yep, give me engineering facility. Okay, there we go. Now, generally speaking, I boost... Uh, society research right off the bat because it's that's where all of the initial colonization stuff is but I don't think I'm going to do that this time I think I'm just going to grab I'm going to grab encourage free thought because while the ethics diversions isn't good ethics diversions really doesn't come into play until you have multiple colonies and they're really spread out so I'm, I'm actually going to grab that for now for the extra 10% across the board and that's going to cost me one influence per turn. Essentially habitable world right there. Now we are desert based as our sort of ideal. And where are we in the system? Oh, we're kind of backed in a corner over here. This is interesting. Industrial wasteland tiles that we'll have to get rid of. Okay, build a hydroponics farm there. Mining network there. And something I'm not going to do <laughs> is is I'm not going to skip on building up a fleet because that was probably the biggest mistake I made in the last let's last the last let's play is that because the I guess cuz the AI was on hard or what have you it was significantly more aggressive. So this time I'm going to build up to my fleet capacity, my naval capacity as soon as I possibly can and then once I've established more colonies and have more spaceports and this goes up, I'll continue to build ships. Cuz if nothing else I'll have to deal with pirates, not to mention possible early aggression from the different empires the community members have made. Anyway, I hope that you've enjoyed uh, this uh, episode zero of the new Let's Play and that you join for episode one. I'll put a link like right here on the screen for you so you can jump right to that. Thanks so much for watching. Till next time, I'm Mal and I'll see you later.